<laughs> hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and in this video here, I'm going to be showing you all something pretty cool, thankfully, for the PlayStation 3, and something that's actually been requested here for a while, but I guess I'm getting around to doing it now. I've done a video about this on the Xbox 360, but here on the PS3, I'm going to be showing you all how you can obtain game saves online, re-sign them and run them on your console, and also even back up and modify your own game saves if you so choose to do that using Apollo Save Tool and a modified PlayStation 3. Now this is going to require a few prerequisites. First of all, it will require your PS3 in front of you to be operational and working. It's also going to require that PS3 to be modified, whether you are running custom firmware or PS3 HIN. This here is a PS3 HIN enabled system, which allows me to run homebrew such as these applications right here. As long as your system has been modified, you should be good to go. You're also going to need a USB drive on hand to transfer files to and from the console from our computer, and we're also going to need a computer on hand to get the necessary downloads. With all that being said, let's go ahead and work on getting some game saves over on the PC. So grab a USB drive and let's get started. Now the application we're going to be using for this is going to be Apollo Save Tool, something that I have covered before and it is really a Swiss army knife of really awesome stuff you can do with the PS3. As you can see, it says that you can download, unlock, patch, and resave save game files as well as unlock and resign trophies, back up and restore licenses, and create PS2 classic images. We're really just going to be focusing on the PS3 style saves here, but there's many other things that you can do with this. I'm going to have this page linked, the GitHub IO page linked, down below in the description. So not only you can download this, but so you can also go through the features and settings which are available on here. And it also has a pretty good Q&A down here if you're wanting to check not only screenshots, but here we go if you have some extra questions on this. So the first thing we're going to need is Apollo Save Tool, of course, which you can get the download right here by navigating over to the GitHub page and the releases section. And I'd recommend downloading the latest version. Now, even if you're following this and you already have Apollo installed, if you have an outdated version, it would not hurt to update it here. And I say that because there's always new support that's being added in every single release here. You can see that Buccanero has just added a lot of cool stuff for managing PS1 and PS2 virtual memory card images. There's also support for more games with each update, such as this one, the 2.0.0 update, has support for Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes, FIFA 18 and 19, as well as Resident Evil 6. So that's all to say your specific game might not be supported in this yet, and there's no guarantee it will be supported, but it doesn't hurt to be on the latest version here. In order to download this, go ahead and click on the Apollo PS3 PKG and save it somewhere you can easily find it. Now, as for our saves, there's several places that we can get them, and one of them is actually from Apollo. You see, Apollo has its own online database, which we can check out here, and it's accessible within the app as well, too. But if you come over to the Apollo Saves repository, check out PS3, there's plenty of saves that are available here. However, these are according to the actual ID for the game itself. So maybe you don't want to look up your ID and find it here. I'm going to show you some other traditional sites you can get them from. However, if you are wanting access to these saves, don't worry, you can actually get them within the app itself. Now over in the FAQ section here, they do recommend some sites such as Brewology, GameFAQs, and even Google here. So I'm going to have these two linked down below in the description, and I've already browsed them for the games that I'm wanting to show, so we can give them a shot. This here is the Brewology website, and if you want to download a PS3 save, you can just look up your game here. So for example, I'm going to do this for the Jack and Daxter collection. So I'm going to click on J and they have some saves here for the first and second one. Let's click on C saved games for the first one. And you can see here that it depends on your region. So if you have a US save, it's going to differ than a EU save, for example. I know that my version of the game is the US version, so I'm going to give this one a download, but do keep in mind if you want to download any saves from Brewology, you will have to register for a free account on here. A second site which might work for you in case there's saves on here that are not on Brewology is GameFAQs, as was recommended by Buccanero himself. Now what you can do is navigate over to the alphabet section, and the one I'm going to look for is Silent Hill HD Collection. So I looked here before, and I think it's going to be on page 3. Here we go, Silent Hill HD Collection. And here's a difference, for example, there is a difference between the HD Collection and the HD Edition. Just keep that in mind because saves are going to differ between regions. So since I'm going to get the HD Collection, I'll click on Saves. 
And right here, there's only one save right here, which is a cleared save for Silent Hill 2. And this will work just fine for what we're doing. So as long as this matches for the version you are playing here, just go ahead and download your save and save it somewhere you can find it. Now, once we have everything downloaded, we should have the Apollo package as well as our saves right here. Now, if you just double check these saves, I downloaded a couple of them and they're set up a bit differently. This one here has a readme showing that we've downloaded it from Ruology, so that's not a part of the save itself, but you can see that there's just the raw files in here. However, they need to be in a specific folder structure. Another game like this, however, the Silent Hill HD collection save does have the proper folder structure right here. However, I'm going to tell you all that, at least from my experience, I've noticed it tends to work better if you have a save on your console already and then you end up bringing these save data from here into that existing save, so to speak. I'll show you all here, but what we're going to do is we're not going to copy over the saves just yet. What we're going to do is just copy over the package file. So for this here, you will need your USB drive, which has already been formatted to FAT32. And if you've used a modified PS3 for any amount of time, you should be familiar with this format and setting it up. However, once you have a USB drive ready, just go into the drive itself, copy and paste the Apollo package file to the root of the USB drive, and once it's been copied over, we can now exit out of here, right click, eject our USB drive, and take it over to the console. Now over at the PS3, if you're using PS3 HIN, make sure you enable it. If you're running custom firmware, you should be okay right off a of cold boot, but once you have your USB drive plugged in, go to the package manager, install package files, standard, and then install the Apollo package. And here we go, that's been completed, so we can now go back. And as you can see, you should have Apollo save tool right here. And all you need to do is launch this. Now, if you haven't run Apollo before, it's going to just do some quick housekeeping here and extract a whole bunch of files. Just let it do its thing and wait. Now, once it starts up, it looks a little something like this. And like I said, it would be most recommended to start off with some saves that you already have with games that you've booted up. So I know the two games that I'm going to be trying, I've already started at the very beginning of them. What you can do is go over to hard drive saves and go ahead and grab one of your saves. In my case, mine is Jack and Daxter the Precursor Legacy. So I'll tap the X button here and you can check a few of the options. But the main thing we're going to do here is copy this save game. So we can just select this option, tap the X button, and then select where your USB drive is located. Now I just have zero and one. But if you're checking at USB 0, this port will be furthest right and it's closest to the Blu-ray drive on your console. And USB 1 is to the left of that. So since mine is plugged into USB 0, I'm going to tap the X button and let it copy over. And there we go, it's copied. Now it would also be recommended when you do this if you want to export a save. For example, if you want to share this online or if you want to just archive it a little bit nicer, it would be better to save it to a zip. Now for backup purposes, I'm going to save it to a zip here, just so we have that option, just in case anything goes wrong on our save. So give it a few moments, it's going to then archive that zip file and then copy it over, and there we go. So we've technically been able to back that up twice. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to do the same thing with Silent Hill 2 HD. You can come in here and with your own save on the hard drive, you can copy it out, copy it to the USB drive, and then the next one is going to be save game to zip. USB drive, and there we go. That's all there is to it. So now we're going to exit out of here, exit out yet again, and I'm just going to go back to the beginning of Apollo save tool, and now we can disconnect our USB drive and take it back over to the PC to start modifying our saves. Once your saves have been copied over, you can go into your USB drive, and if copied over successfully, we no longer need the Apollo package since that's been installed, but you should see a PS3 folder, and then export and save data. Save data is pretty self-explanatory, it's going to be our save data. Right here I believe this is Silent Hill 2, so that's the save. And this one here is going to be our Jack and Daxter save. So we have the both of those there. On top of that you could also go into the export directory and you can see them zipped up right here. The owner's XML is going to be your account and console info, as well as the actual user ID right there for the system itself. And these are set up nicely because it shows which save it is, which game ID it is set up for, and on top of that you can go in here 
and it preserves the file structure. So these ones are nice backups to have, and these are the types of files you can copy and paste somewhere onto your desktop, cloud storage, what have you, so your original save files are untouched and safe. However, let's work on getting these save data here changed up. So I'll move this over to the side, and the first one we can work on is Silent Hill HD Collection. I'm going to right click this and use something such as 7-zip to extract here since it will extract into its own folder. Now that we have the folder, we can go ahead and double click this and we can see the ID is BLUS30810. If you're using a different game, it's going to have a different ID, but the steps are going to be the same. We can go into the folder here, the one that we have downloaded, grab all of the files inside of this, right click and copy, then on our USB drive, go into the save data directory go into the directory for the game you want to import save data into. So mine is my BLUS30810. And then inside of here, we're going to get rid of our own save data and we're going to right click and paste in the downloaded save data. So there we go. We can now close out of this and I'm going to do the same thing with Jack, except this one I'm going to extract into its own directory. Once it's been extracted out, we can do the exact same thing here. We're going to go back one directory in our USB drive, which this one I know is for Jack and Daxter. Inside of here, I'm going to delete my own save files. And inside of this, I'm going to grab the downloaded ones, highlight all of them, right click, copy, close, and then paste. And there we go. So our saves have been modified and we can actually get rid of this readme since that's not needed. However, these are not usable yet. So I'm going to show you how to make them usable. We can navigate back out here, right click, eject our USB drive, and take it back over to the system with Apollo. With our USB drive reinserted, go ahead and navigate over to USB saves. And within USB saves here, you can check out these saves themselves that are the ones that you have exported and now you're going to be importing. So for this here, let's go ahead and do Jack and Daxter first. I'm going to tap X on this, and then I'm going to copy save game. Now you can tap X on copy save game and copy it to HDD. Say yes if you need to overwrite, and there we go, it's been copied over. Now you can hit back and go to any other games you want to change out. For example, Silent Hill 2, I'm going to do the same thing here. Just copy this from USB to HDD, overwrite, and that has been completed. Now if you have a bunch of games, or even just you know at least one here that you're wanting to do this on at once, you can also always go to bulk save management, but we did not do that here. So now that the saves have been copied over, we can exit out of USB, go over to HDD saves, and inside of here, we need to find these saves for the games that we worked on. This one here is going to be Jack and Daxter, and I'll show you something a little more granular. From here, you can check the other options on here. So if you want to change the account ID, remove console ID, change region title ID, you can do that, and even do some hex editing if you want to. However, we do need to re-sign this to our profile, which is required for this to work. So to do this, on the hard drive, go up here to Apply Changes and Resign, tap the X button, and it has been modified. Now we can go back, and I'll show you something a little cool with Silent Hill 2. If you come down here, it depends on the game, but some games might have extra options here, depending on the support that Apollo has. So if we come down here, you can check out the cheat section, and there's cheats that you can actually apply to this save if you want to. Now, I only recommend really doing this after you verify the save is working, and then you can back it up and play around with it. But since we just need to get this save working, I'm going to come up here to the top and hit Apply Changes and Resign. Once that's been done, we now have both of our saves resigned and copied over successfully. So we can exit out of this completely and now give our new saves a try. Now the first one we can try this on is Jack and Daxter. So I have the disc loaded in. Let's go ahead and give this a shot. And check this out. I can show you that looking at my save before, it was a brand new save with 0%. But you could see right here, the changes are immediate at the first menu here where you can select your game. I did not do anything for Jack 3 or 2, but the first one is set to 100%. So we already know that it was successful from that front. And here we go, we have the game loaded up. I'm going to press the start button, go down to load game, and you can see right here we have a completely cleared 100% save, which we downloaded online. And I can assure you, at least from this run here, I played no more than a minute on here just to get this game up and running and working. But as you can see here, we're able to come up here, seem to have pretty much everything maxed out, so we were able to download and re-sign a 100% complete save, which is now working on Jack and Daxter. 
Let's go ahead, close out of this here, and I'll show you that the same result can be found with Silent Hill 2. So this time around, I've now booted up Silent Hill 2 with the modified or imported or downloaded save. And first of all, I did tell you all to pay attention to the options, but you can see right off the bat here, I have load, continue, but I also have new game, which is highlighted in gold. So that means that this save has been cleared to some degree. But also if we go over to the options, I did not change these here. But if we change this over to, it looks like the previous user changed the vibration on here. But if I check the extra options, check this out, we have a few other options here that have also been modified. But I do know this bullet adjust, we did not have this before. So we can now go ahead, exit out of the options menu, close out of here. And you can see here, again, it's a little odd how Silent Hill 2 is set up, but really, even though you have a new game option, when you go into here with the new game save, you're then able to go through and play through with all your extra bonuses and such. So I know at least right off the bat, Silent Hill 2 is not going to be as obvious as Jack and Daxter, but I did want to show that we at least had the changes saved and working on here. Now, as a final setting I wanted to highlight here, I want to talk about downloading saves from Apollo itself. You can go to the online DB option, wait for it to load in, and from here, you can look up the exact game that you're wanting to download a save for. Now do keep in mind this is dependent on the exact game ID and that is dependent on the region. So for example, there's two Call of Duty Black Ops. This one is the North American version. This one is the European version. If you want to get one of these saves, you can tap the X button on here, wait for it to load in everything, and then you can look at these saves available. So here we can get like the all missions complete on veteran for example tap the X button on this, and then you can choose where you want to download it to. Now I've noticed if you try to download it to the hard drive itself, it just saves the archive as a zip, and it saves it to the hard drive, but you can't do anything with that directly on the PS3. So this is where it still helps to have a USB drive at least, because what you can do is tap the X button, download it to USB. So it's going to do the same thing where it will download the zip, except this time around it will extract those files to the USB drive itself. This one might take some time here, but as you can see, it's able to do it like that. You can now tap the X button, go back, go back yet again. And then from here, you can navigate over to the USB saves. And within USB saves, you could find your save file, which has been extracted. And once you're in here, navigate down to copy save game and copy that to the hard drive. After a few seconds, it should be copied over. So now we can exit out of here, exit out yet again. We're going to now go to the hard drive saves themselves, look for our game that we have downloaded and transferred. That's going to be Call of Duty. And then do the exact same thing. If you want to apply any type of patches, you can do so. But if you're not doing that, just hit apply changes and resign. It's now been modified. And at that point we can exit out and we should have our Call of Duty save copied over. We can double check this within the XMB if we go to the Save Data Utility, and you can see right here, I do have a save that has been re-signed that is Call of Duty Black Ops. So that's how you do that as an example. Either way, that is about it for this video here. Hopefully it helped out with backing up your saves, being able to unlock them, being able to import new saves from online places, and even download saves directly to your system. Well, somewhat directly, as long as we have that USB drive using the Apollo save tool. It is really cool being able to do this mostly effortlessly through this application and most of it on the console itself. So a big thank you to Bucanero for releasing and maintaining this tool. Either way, that is about it for this video here. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated. And if you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well too. But as I always say, this is Mr. Mario, signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone.